way Fabcon kicked off today. This was the most amazing keynote I've ever attended, I believe. So this is so much content. They told us in one and a half hour that I would like to start step by step. This is the first video I pre present to you. Um, so who am I anyway? My name is Andreas Kowlischka. I'm the founder of Datenkultur, that's data culture in English. I'm here in Las Vegas and try to show you what's happening here. And believe me or not, this is pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. But enough of me. Let's kick off the keynote, see what they are talking for yourself. First one is that Fabric is a complete analytics platform. It means that it has everything you need for analytics, soup to nuts, you know, from ingesting data into the lake all the way to delivering insights to the business user. Everything is one product, everything delivered as SaaS, software as a service. We're going to talk about that even more. Second, it is uh, lake centric and it is open. We're going to talk about one lake. One lake is the beating heart of fabric and how one lake really changes the whole data landscape. Third, Fabric is not just about data preparation, data curation, data serving. Fabric is also making sure that business is getting value out of the data. And this is where we're talking about empowering every business user. Power BI pay, plays a central role there. And lastly, we are in the age of AI, and AI is front and center in Fabric. And in the last section, we're going to see a lot of AI demos. But those four promises, the reason why I'm you know, reminding you of those four promises is because it's really these promises are the structure of the presentation today. We're going to have four pillars, each one for each one, one of those promises, and we're going to see the various innovation of the product in those pillars. So, we're going to start with a complete analytics platform, and as I already showed you, this is how Fabric looks like. It's one product that does everything, from the data factory that is just the data, uh, data engineering, data science, data warehousing, real-time analytics, BI, the data activator, all on a common foundation of AI, all on a common foundation of governance, all on a common foundation of storage in one leg, and it's one product with a unified architecture, unified experience, unified governance, and just one thing to buy. It's an all-in-one system, you get it all, in one. Now it's a SaaS product, software. <laughs> it's a SaaS product, software as a service. It's model much more like Office 365 than it's more like you know a typical hyperscale cloud like a GCP or AWS or Azure. And and it's you know people sometimes ask, so what's what is this SaaS? How is this different from PaaS, platform as a service? And say to SaaS is like like going to the other dealership. Picking a model, picking a color, picking a couple of optional features, taking the keys and driving home. And pass is more like going to the O'Reilly Auto Parts store, buying an engine block, windshield seats, doors, wheels, and going to your home garage and building your homemade car. So we are in the finished product business. It's everything just works. And it starts with what we call the 5 by 5 principle. And 5 by 5 is not like the 4 by 4 of cars. It's 5 by 5 stands for 5 seconds to sign up, 5 minutes to wow which means that it's instant onboarding, instant provisioning, the UI, it just, it just looks like Office much more than it looks like anything else. And then everything is auto-integrated, everything is auto-optimized. A minimal knobs to play with, just like you don't have knobs to optimize your word, you don't need to have opti many knobs to optimize your, your fabric. And just like Office 365, and notice I'm having a lot of Office 365 analogies here, uh, you have this kind of very strong concept of a tenant with centralized administration. There's just one tenant for the organization, and in that tenant, you configure once the compliance, security, governance policies, and then it applies to all your data, all your users, all your project instantly. So we're going to start with just a reminder demo. It's, actually, this is the only demo you don't want to see any new feature because for the rest of the 90 minutes, we're going to just look at new features. But just remind us a little bit of what does it mean to have a SaaS experience. And I'm going to invite the stage Patrick again. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> so we are going to see what it means to have a SaaS product. Yeah, Patrick's very important. I'm here. And so, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started. All right, so let's take a look. So, I'm here in the Fabric Portal. I'm going to become a data engineer today. I'm a data engineer, I'm going to create a lake house, and just one click. I give it a name, and without doing anything, 
I have a lake house. I don't have to spin up a cluster. I don't have networking. I don't have storage. It's not even data into the lake house using the one lake explorer. And, and it'll automatically sync the data into my lake house with just a few clicks. But now I want to move data at petabyte scale. I want to move it really fast. Okay? So I'm going to create a pipeline. Pipelines are great. Pipelines are great. So I'm going to create a pipeline and I'm going to use SQL Server, Azure SQL, as the source for this. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that Azure SQL database. I'm going to select a few tables. And then I'm going to set up the mappings for it. And just like that, my data is there. I switch back to my lake house. Boom. There was all my data. Right? But we're not stopping there. We're not stopping there. What if you're a SQL person? What if you like to write SQL like me? You can switch over to the analytical endpoint. Boom. You can write queries. You can create store procedures. You can create views. You can create functions. You can get really, really complex with this. What if I don't like typing? That's OK. That's OK. That's OK. Switch to the new visual view. And now I can add a couple of tables here. You'll see, right? I'm adding a div store. I'm adding online sales. Because I'm going to see which one of my stores are making sales, right? And then I can do really complex joins, inner joins, outer joins, a join for everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> we click OK. And then we just have our data right there. But you know. I can't talk about this without talking about my favorite feature, Power BI. Power BI. And it's tightly integrated. It's tightly integrated. In the web browser, I can create a data model. I can create relationships. I can write measures because DAX is just so easy to write. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's simple. It's just a piece of paper to write it. I can write DAX and then with one click of a button, guess what I'm going to have? Because I'm an I'm a amazing report designer. Watch this. A beautiful report. I have all my columns, all my tables, all my measures. I can add it to the view, and just like that, right? So, and everything is in the workspace. Everything's in the workspace. And then, if I want to see how everything's connected, I can switch over to a beautiful lineage view to see everything. So, this is really what we mean by a SaaS experience. Everything flows. Everything flows. Yeah. 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 We saw how we kind of instantly created the, the lake house, and then instantly moved to the SQL query, and then instantly did a pipeline, and then semantic models, and then Power BI reports, all in one switch, just no alcabbing or anything like it, just one That's integrated right. product, SaaS product, no Amazing. configuration, no logs, just working. Yeah. Now, the channel that we have, and this is the only, you know, this is the only demo where I'm not going to see any new features. Yeah. Now, from this one on, we're going to start talking about new features, okay? Yeah. Uh, so, the, uh, the problem is that as we look at those projects, as we build all these amazing technologies, these workspaces that we have all these items in are becoming quite big. Yeah. A lot, a lot of items. Things become complex. And not only things are complex because I have a lot of items, but because we have now a bunch of team members that are all working on the same workspace and you know, it's becoming hard not to step on each other's yeah. toes. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to make it easier to create large projects, manage large projects. Yeah. And so we are introducing something that people ask for. for very long time. Everybody. Else. Everybody. Else. I was out in the hall just a few minutes ago and somebody asked me about this. So what is it? <laughs> 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 I can do it. We're on the area. We're making progress. So, yeah. But what, what do we have? Uh, so why not? Let's just take a look. Okay. I can show you. So we have lots of new features. The first thing we're going to start off with is we're adding new items. We're giving new items to get support. The warehouse, pipelines, spark compute jobs, environments, all those things are in the game. It's absolutely amazing. And so let's say, though, I want to work by myself. I like to sometimes go off in a little silo and maybe create a feature branch or break some stuff. And I need to branch out. Okay? How would you branch out? It's not that simple today. No. But now, today, all you have to do is choose our new branch out experience, complete the form, provide a new branch name, a new workspace, guess what happens to me? It creates a Git repository. It creates a Git repository. It creates a new workspace. It creates a new workspace. And it saves everything automatically. Everything automatically in that folder. So all the time, so what's the computer over there? That's right. Everything. Everything. I don't have anything. Just a few clicks. 
And I'll just, just now look at my leave for the next day. Now I'm gonna make some changes. So I've created my new feature branch and I'm gonna make some changes. So I'm gonna change the pipeline. I'm gonna add a new table so that I can pull more data at petabyte scale, right? I'm gonna move a lot more data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to Azure DevOps. You see, once I make that change, and then I'm gonna do a comparison between my main dev branch and my feature branch to see exactly what changed. So I'm right in DevOps, and you'll see this change. And so it's gonna do the comparison, and you can see it's just JSON, so everybody can read that. Yes, simple. And so I can see that I had a dim product, but what I want to do now, I want to sync. I want to sync my net main dev branch, and I have a deployment pipeline. I want to sync all the phases of my deployment pipeline. And you don't pipeline. have to do it just with the UI. I don't. So I can do a new pull request, and it'll trigger so many new APIs that we have out. These APIs are sync branches. They'll sync deployment pipelines. You can see my the pipeline is completely synced up right now. So now CICD is fully automated. Fully automated. Fully automated pipeline. So I got one more thing. I got one more thing. GitHub support. All of you want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Okay, so we have folders, we have the uh, we have this git support extended, and we are going to finish the full support of every IBM fabric in the next six months. That's a that's a promise. That's a full promise. promise. I can't so, wait. Yes. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. Now, <laughs> there is a. But when, when we talk about when we talk about how to how to arrange a project, the project, you actually think some of the things about how do we actually think about projects ourselves? You know, yeah. if, if my boss is, I want to do another project, my boss is coming to me and say, can you explain to me what your project looks like? And I typically will go to the whiteboard and start this painting or you know, drawing the globe diagram of the project, something that would look like this. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> I did that the other day. Yeah, this is like a typical medallion art. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, and you just draw it on the whiteboard and you explain it. It's the most intuitive way to, to depict the, the project. And we thought, like, if people like to think of their project this way, why are we forcing them into folders where we can actually give them a more natural experience? Yep. Yep. And this is where we introduce this concept of task flow, where we bring that log diagram, which we call now task flow, into the product, really part, integral part of the work. Yeah, it's nice. So, we're announcing today. Let's take a look. Let's, let's, take, take, a look. Yeah, let's, let's take, take a look. Yeah. So, if you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new workspace right here. And I'm just give it a name. Everybody knows how to create a workspace. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to click apply down at the bottom. My new workspace is going to be created. And you're going to get a new experience. You're going to have two different panes here. And so I can choose to select the task flow. So I'm going to choose task flow. I'm going to get a list of templates that I can choose from. I can do a basic data analytics. I can do a medallion architecture, a lambda architecture. I'm going to go ahead and choose a lambda architecture. That one looks great. And choose select. I'm going to select it. And then it just lays out. This is the workspace. This is the workspace. Right and we here. have all this book that's going to be amazing. Yes. Yes. Right? And so as I select these, so if I choose one, it's contextual, so it's going to say, oh, no, you should do this. You should add, you know, for analytics, you should do a notebook. You should do these things, right? So every one of those tasks really corresponds to a specific class of item. So it's, you don't get this giant list. No. You just get the item that corresponds with the, the kind of activities we do in the task. Yeah, and I can make this my own. So I can click Add, and I'm going to, I'm going to track changes from my lake house. So if anything's or ch anything is changing, I can connect it up and then watch when I choose track. It's going to suggest some items for me, and it's going to say, hey, you should create a reflex and set up data activator. Exactly. So everyone will just, you can just make it your own. Yeah. Now, how does it look like when it's all done? All right. So here we go. I'm going to switch to a workspace that I've created, and I have all these items, a really nice architecture. It's actually a medallion architecture that I've created here. Right? Yes. So you can see I have bronze, silver, gold. Well, what's nice is you can see everything's tagged or categorized into my item. So this new colorful column corresponds with which this item, which block it belongs to That's in right. the task. So if I choose one, so watch, I'll choose the data process of Silver Lake or visualize and then filter that down. So like, so it's like, 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 like a power yeah. 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 <laughs> so you can actually reasonably navigate and find which item belongs to which box. Absolutely. And absolutely. So you just click them. You see how it's just filtering, filtering, changing things. Just, it just works. It's just, it's just one of my favorite features. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if I want to add, and if I want to add items, I just click the paperclip. It gives me an assigned item visual, and then I can just assign those items. So that, that's what it that just is. works. So, so if you think about it, this task flow is really giving you so many, so, so many benefits. First of all, if you start, it gives you kind of a framework of how to structure your project. Yep. And then it makes it easier to create a new item because each task is correlated with a certain class of item. So you never have to deal with, you know, 200, you know, 50 types of items that you can look, choose from. You just find it, three or four items that are really matching that, that right. task. Uh, and then, 
and then it allows you to navigate your workspace with the cross highlighting. And then, last thing, imagine that you, you can finish the project six months out, and then come back and say, what did I do? I don't remember. Self-document. Self-document. You actually Self see the structure of your project. That's right. That's right. That's, right. That's, that's really amazing. So yeah. we, we, show, we see that quite a lot of things here. We're just going to summarize. And before we kind of summarize, uh, I'm going to show you here two categories. We want to look at the same two categories. First of all, we want to see something I said we call public preview. This means features that are available this week. Okay? Woo! And the other thing is we want to other categories going to say sneak peek, which means features that are going to be available in the next few months. Yep. Okay, so public preview, almost everything you see is public preview, except passwords is still coming in the next few still months. Coming. Still coming. And the GitHub support is coming next We're few months. Working on it. We're working on it. So thank right. you so much. Thank you.